I suppose in my capacity as Chair of the Employment and Learning Committee, I'm delighted to welcome you all to today's CAS Summit seminar. The theme of this session is access to nursing education, and it discusses the evaluation of the pre-registration nursing programme run by the Open University, the Five Health Trusts, the Department of Health and Social Services and Public Safety, and the Department for Employment and Learning. This seminar is particular note to the Committee for Employment and Learning, not just in terms of producing highly skilled professionals, but as an exemplar of helping people progress through their careers through high quality part-time higher education, which is embedded in the workplace. In my time as chair of the Committee for Employment and Learning, I've met a number of OU nursing students during the, stu their, the studies, both here at Parliament Buildings as well as at the Open University headquarters in Belfast. And I've been impressed by their dedication and support that they have received from their, their employers. And I suppose at this time I should declare um, a conflict of interest as being an OU graduate myself. So it's just, if you hear me praising the OU more than any other university, you'll understand why. I think one of the first events I actually hosted as chair uh, was an information event for the three universities here in the Long Gallery. And it was there I was particularly struck by the Open University's presentation, which was focused around the, the, nursing, the nursing provision. And indeed, I was delighted to attend the Open, Uni Open University degree ceremony at the Waterfront Hall in Belfast a year later, when it was that same student, Mr Barry McGee, McGee, who actually crossed the stage to receive his degree. And since that, I've been very impressed through our, our committee outreach. We've had a number of committee meetings actually down in the OU, and we met Colleen Conway and Donna McGovern, I think it was, who were two higher education mental health nurse, nursing students who I believe are using the qualification they've gained through the OU to progress in their career pathway. And I believe they're going to graduate in October of this year. So it's not only are we talking about something in theory, we've actually been able to see as a committee that this delivers and is practicing what it preaches. So in addition, this model must be of interest due to the ongoing issues within the public economies across the United Kingdom. As we all know, public finances in Northern Ireland are increasingly restricted. And I think the role in the nursing higher education qualification is particularly relevant to Northern Ireland situation taking the recent uh, news article, I think, at the start of the week, which showed there were upwards of 800 nursing vacancies in Northern Ireland at the minute. So this, this can answer some, if not all, of our problems. For the Department of Employment and Learning is particularly limited in the funding it can provide to the higher education institutions and further education colleges. And over time, this could have an impact on the skills development of the Northern Ireland workforce. New approaches to tackling skills gaps are increasingly important to our economy. And indeed, the Executive's Northern Ireland Economic Strategy sets as a priority the rebalancing of the economy through improving. It actually states the skills and the employability of the entire workforce so that people can progress up the skills ladder, thereby delivering higher productivity and increased social inclusion. So the need to improve the skills base was highlighted in the recent published Northern Ireland Skills Barometer by the Ulster University's Economic Policy Centre and was discussed at a CAS seminar last month. The barometer identified a number of existing and future skills gaps. And these gaps are between the needs of the employers and the training which employees have received. The barometer identified a pot potential undersupply of nurses at national qualification frameworks levels 4, 5 and 6. So by improving the skills base of the Northern Ireland workforce, come, it comes with a series of challenges, from achieving value for money in light of tighter budgets, to increasing access to higher ed education for individuals from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Work has been carried out by the Department of Employment and, Deployment and Learning in order to try and tackle this issue. The widening horizon strategy, for example, seeks to ensure that talented individu individuals are given every opportunity to benefit from higher education that is right for them, irrespective of their personal or social background. In addition, work to be carried out on the big conversation launched in September 2015 and uh, intends to begin a discussion on how best higher education in Northern Ireland can be financed. The aim is to ensure value for money for the public sector, whilst ensuring that high quality higher education provision exists. Today's briefing from the Open University and the South Eastern Health and Social Care Trust is particularly pertinent to the discussion of both widening access to higher education and to the future shape of skills development. It discusses an evaluation of the pre-registration nursing programme 
a course run by the Open University that course offers staff already employed in healthcare support roles the opportunity to undertake a four-year part-time nursing degree. So it is designed to meet staff needs and to widen access to higher education for people who may not have the necessary qualifications to enter the more traditional nursing degree programmes. And it's my pleasure I will now introduce our speakers, Professor Jan Dabber and Donna Gallagher of the Open University and Paul Carlin of the South Eastern Health and Social Care Trust. And I hope you find the presentation an informative and useful briefing. Thank you. As we start, um, I'll just make sure everything's working here. Okay. Looking at Northern Ireland in particular, we're um, sitting very much akin to the rest of uh, the world in terms of our healthcare needs and the changes that are facing us all. Specifically here in Northern Ireland, we have a high demand for healthcare. We are within a changing world where our service users have much more access to information on, on the web. Their knowledge base has increased. And there's a great need for us to bring that care much closer to home, especially here in Northern Ireland. And a great need for us to be much more responsive. We do have the challenges of an ageing population, and that's, um, that's evidenced across the whole of Northern Ireland, our five health and social care trusts. Um, in terms of disease burden, we're seeing more complex admissions through our emergency departments and into our wards in hospital and back out into community where our staff are having to be better trained and better equipped to deal with patients with complex needs. Our service users have great expectations from us and rightly so and we have to appreciate the greater knowledge and awareness of their conditions and their ability to self-manage as well with our support. Transforming your care has a great emphasis on taking care provision closer to home, into our local communities, and we're doing our best to work across all services and through education to enable that to happen. The Donaldson report itself identified certain challenges and collectively as institutions um, for education and with our, our service provider partners, both in the independent sector and statutory sector, we need to work very closely together to address some of those challenges within the Donaldson report. In terms of recruitment then into nurse education, um, and as Robin says, it's very pertinent in terms of being in the media at the minute. It's very important and we feel it's very important that we aim to get the right people into nurse education. And we pride ourselves in the Open University using the value-based recruitment model that we do, working in full partnership with the trusts presently and hopefully within the independent sector um, in the coming years to do that, to get the people into nurse education who already have, um, I suppose, demonstrated that value base. We need to work with our partners, our trusts, to enable more staff then to develop. That is essential, it's the way forward. And it's certainly endorsed within Barrack and Francis reports, which you will be familiar with. So we do need to enhance and enable this career pathway for all staff. In terms of the history of the OU programme itself, we started the programme in partnership with the five health and social care trusts, uh, which was then 17 trusts back in 2004, offering a diploma in higher education, and that trained nurses for mental health nursing and adult nursing. We uh, launched our, our degree programme, uh, which was endorsed by the NMC in 2013, where we still offer education programmes, professional programmes within two fields of practice, mental health and adult, and that is fully commissioned by the Department for Health, Social Services and Public Safety here in Northern Ireland, as are all university programmes for nurse education. Our programme differs in that it is work-based, so we're working with our healthcare assistants who become our student nurses, and they remain with us for a four-year period on a part-time work-based programme where they remain within their paid employment for the four-year period, working periods of the year within their substantive post as a healthcare support worker, earning their salary, which provides great stability for them and their family, and employment with their employer, uh, their, their managers within clinical practice, and also then we support them to develop then professionally and academically. Okay. In terms of our evaluation, we got to a point with the programme and its success, especially from 2004, where we felt we had to work in partnership and provide some form of evaluation to not only our sponsors at the Department of Health, but to our partners. We feel this programme very much 
hits on a lot of our policy agendas currently in terms of widening access. We're working with those um, employees who are at lower bands, lower grades, from a grade, uh, I suppose, employment band two on up to three. We feel that this programme has really strengthened and enabled us to form very close working relationships, not only with our colleagues within the five trusts, but also within our with our colleagues across the other universities in terms of um, practice placements across all of our trusts. We coordinate that as a one piece with our, our universities. We feel that we focus very much on the individual nurse who comes into the programme to ensure that he or she is fit for purpose and practice. And we felt that it was very important at this stage to evaluate the impact of the programme on the registrant as they leave the programme and go out then into the world of work as a band five employee in the trust, a registered nurse with the NMC. Um, our career pathway not only is being accessed by healthcare assistants, and some of the trusts, what we're finding is that other disciplines, other caring disciplines, have um, applied to the programme as well. So we're now seeing uh, support workers coming in from physi physiotherapy departments, um, at, at which, which, which is great. So we know that we're having the right impact. Social cohesion has been a, a big driver within this um, evaluation and will continue to be as we move some of our research forward because we feel that it is having a significant impact. Our staff are remaining embedded in their local community. They work and they uh, engage in practice learning within their local hospitals. They continue to work with their employer and we feel that we are now um, I suppose increasing the capacity to develop some of these leaders in that group of staff and enable them to move forward. We want to provide an evidence base for future planning and future growth of the programme. We feel that is essential. We wanted, we wanted to look specifically at retention, our partnership models, uh, the importance of having that support for our staff while they're trying to maintain uh, their role, their substantive post, engage in academic development and practice development as well and access to third level education. There's a bit of detail here in, in, in terms of the, the, uh, the presentation, in terms of the approach that we took. There's more detail in the, the, the policy brief. But there was two sort of key approaches. We, we done a questionnaire, 215 were sent out, and we also ran two focus groups. Now the focus groups were very limited in that they, they focused on the Southeastern Trust, not across the five trusts, but the questionnaire went out to all five trusts in Northern Ireland. Um, so the findings were, we had a 12% response rate in, in regards to the questionnaires, which is reasonable enough actually for a questionnaire type sort of uh, piece of work. And what we did glean was that there was a, a variety of things that came from that. We had a traditional split in regards to the, the, the sort of the sexual profile of the, the, the sample, and that um, there was a higher age on average across these particular uh, participants than you would normally expect within a, a traditional degree and entry program, I suppose. So that, we felt that that really reflected a greater life experience for these candidates moving forward. Um, this, the, the, the participants had a lot of prior experience, obviously, um, and they, they came from a variety of backgrounds. So they, they came from dis different disciplines. Um, primarily, they were healthcare assistants, and they worked in uh, medicine, surgery, mental health, uh, midwifery, outpatients clinics, so a really broad church, as it were. And what was really of note was that 32% had less than five years' experience, but 68% had between five and over 15 years of experience in a clinical practice. Now that is as a healthcare assistant, uh, but that's valuable, valuable experience in a caring and compassionate uh, profession, obviously. And what was really noticed as well was that there was, in terms of the, the, the change in practice after they qualified, so individuals could move between disciplines, and some did, but overall the service groups weren't impacted. So Surgery sort of remained the same in terms of the numbers that came back into that particular group. Medicine, much the same. So actually the service groups didn't lose anything by those uh, people being involved in, in the, the, uh, the course. So as you can see, in terms of the, the years of experience, 
it, it really does reflect a huge amount of experience for these people coming into this programme. And that, I think, is key because certainly Berwick and Francis talk about that quite strongly um, in their reports after the mid-staffs. So, the benefits to individuals. So, there was a range of applications right across all, all the trusts, which was really, really encouraging. And this is done with the support of the managers and the embedded services that they come from. It, it offers a potential career pathway for all staff. And that's something that the HSC certainly can sell. And that you, you, it's not a static pattern of behavior for you coming in. You can go in as a band two or a band three, and you have potentially a pathway through in terms of professional development, which is quite interesting, actually. The, the type of education is it's very accessible. It's very open. Um, and it can be uh, tailored and dovetailed into clinical practice. It encourages participation and uh, minimizes the impact on both the service and on the end user. And uh, the thing about this is as well is that you're coming from an embedded practice setting. So you have relationships, you have peer support, you have those sorts of um, support mechanisms in place that you can go back to as your, your, your base ward as it were. Um, we feel that there's potentially an impact on social mobility here, and that's really, really key and, and, and quite powerful, potentially, um, because this is about professional development and education and about empowering individuals, and we feel that this potentially is a route for doing that. Uh, what was noted um, is that the 70%, 79% actually, of the, the people that came into this course would not have been able to go into a traditional university course because they had less than two A levels. So that's quite, that's quite powerful in and of itself. And one of the things that this does as well, that it enhances loyalty to the organization. The organization seems investing in its staff and the staff reciprocate that investment. So another really important thing, I suppose, is that the model assures that the theory and practice gap is minimized because you have people coming from a theoretical, they're using theoretical constructs in a real world environment and have been using some of that real world experience to validate the theoretical components. So, what are the benefits to the organization? Um, well, in terms of organizational workforce development, o OWD, it's, um, it allows an internal and structured approach and it, it allows a sort of a pathway for individuals within the organization, which is pretty good. Um, this year, there's going to be 100% growth in this program, which is really exciting for, for all concerned, I suppose. Um, and it enhances individual relationships between practitioners, band fives, threes, fours, and their managers as well. And so it ensures consistency and coherency and fairness, and it utilizes some of the structures already in, in, in place in regards to the KSF approval mechanisms that are used within the trusts, for example. Um, the other thing is it, it creates a, an, a, a structure for social cohesion. Um, what we find is, certainly anecdotally, that these practitioners remain in their communities. So they remain in the trust, they remain in their communities. So that's really a powerful message going forward to other people in those communities, that this is achievable, this is doable. Um, and it also, they, they earn more. They, they, you know, their salaries increase, and that can be seen and incentivize other people in those communities, we certainly would feel. So um, the philosophy of growing your own staff, I think, is a really important message that we, we, we can take forward. Um, and that can be, this can act sort of like as an umbrella for, uh, you know, various programs across various pro professions, maybe not just for nursing. Paul and, and Donna have uh, set out briefly today the evaluation that's happened uh, so far. Um, and really what we would like to do uh, in the future is to build on this uh, evaluation and to um, capture not only retrospectively the impact of the programme in the way that, that's been described, but think about how we can do that prospectively as well. Um, and um, in addition to... Um, 
doing so in Northern Ireland to think about how we can do that UK-wide as well because we, we offer the, the programme in, in England and Scotland too. So one of the things that we'll be looking at is how we can um, track the students from the start of the programme through the programme in terms of um, attrition and retention whilst they're on the programme but also uh, post-qualification as well. And it's also worth saying, I think, too, that whilst the students are on the programme, the attrition on programme is actually a lot lower um, because it's a work-based learning programme and the students are, are committed in the, in the way that Paul and Donna have said, committed to the organisation and committed to the um, aspiration of becoming uh, a qualified nurse. So we want to track the students through track the students beyond uh, and to find out um, you know what they do afterwards um, we know from two smaller studies that we've done that have been UK wide based and included students from from Northern Ireland one that looked at um, the uh, the career progression of alumni from the from the from the program and how quickly they gained um, career development and promotion and what employers thought about uh, the students as well. Um, and uh, uh, the second project, which is around specifically looking at how students experienced the transition from becoming a student to a newly qualified nurse and the extent to which their prior experience, uh, and Paul's explained how much uh, some of the students have in terms of prior experience, what a difference that made to their transition to becoming a newly qualified nurse. So we've got some evidence from projects that we've, uh, we've already done and really want to build on that to uh, construct a much more solid evidence base about the impact of the programme. Um, and also to consider, um, as we've indicated on the slide here, where students end up um, down the line, two, three years down the line, and indeed what they do from a, a continuing professional development point of view in terms of courses. So that's a little bit about the future research. And in terms of future development, um, Paul, I think, already indicated that um, the DHSSPS is continuing to support the development of, of, of the programme, well, the development of nursing per se, um, but the, the number of students is actually going to increase across um, the, the five trusts from 25 to 50 so that's a, a, obviously a sig significant increase um, and you know we're, we're delighted to be able to support the development um, of healthcare assistance in this way ac across Northern Ireland. We'll also be uh, looking as Donna indicated earlier on to the ways in which we can be supporting the independent sector as well um, and helping them to grow their own uh, workforce uh, in the same way. Uh, and finally, uh, we'll be looking to, uh, and uh, are already doing so, working with um, Dell on the higher apprenticeship model as well. So, and, and again, also, although the um, apprenticeships work differently across the, the UK, that is going to be a consistent thing for us to be uh, looking at across the UK as well as in Northern Ireland. <laughs>